Hello everyone, Golden Nova here. Today's episode is this month's patron voted video. I'll link in the description, by the way, much appreciated. And today, we're hopping back onto the lore lift to cover another evil force that threatens Terminus. The Fabled may have manipulated the tribes of the world to lull them into doing their bidding, and Shadal may convert bodies into soulless husks to take on that person's power, but what if you grab both of those abilities and combined them into one singular, sinister amalgam that almost brought the entire world to its knees. Premiering in the December 2011 Hidden Arsenal set, appropriately named Steel Swarm Invasion, the Steel Swarm were freed from their abyssal prison by Gishki Noelia in her quest to rule the marshlands to use its resources to build a new home for her people. Though, one could argue that Noelia was compelled by the Steel Swarm to free them, though I've got a whole lore series about that if you're looking for some clarification on that. And when the Steel Swarm seemed to be defeated, that just unlocked an even worse problem. An infection sleeping at the heart of all Steel Swarm awoke, perhaps the very strain that turned these creatures into the violent invaders they were at the time. The evil swarm would reanimate the corpses of those who had fallen in battle, even ones all the way back during the wars against the Worms and the Fabled. So you can imagine that things weren't particularly well for our heroes. But like I said, lore can be discussed another time. First, we need to steal ourselves to take the field, find out how to produce enough minions to swarm the field, then find what other pawns we can add to our growing empire. Get ready, cause we're gonna learn how to get that W with Ill Swarms Explained. Before we start the episode, Dueling Nexus has launched a makeshift campaign this month for the Nyx Fumo plushie. Gaze into her glorious visage, her dueling prowess, her stare that betrays a head emptier than any void. We've got until the end of the month to fund this thing, so don't delay. Not only does purchasing this get you a ton of freebies on Dueling Nexus, including credits, contributor time, and rarity tokens, all profits are being donated to Community Forests International, a non-profit organization focused on restoring forests in places like Canada, Zanzibar, bar and Mozambique. Get a cute plushie to add to your collection and help fund a good cause all at the same time. Thank you all so much for your time and now back to the video. So what's the deal with ill swarms? Well that one's a bit tricky. Despite all the monsters falling under that very archetypal umbrella, Ste Ill Swarms and Evil Swarms, see what they did there? Couldn't be more different. So we're gonna split this video into a few parts. First, we'll cover the Steel Swarms, then move on to the Evil Swarms, while sprinkling in their third spell and trap support archetype, Infestation, as appropriate. So, what's the deal with Steel Swarms? Well, despite their appearance, they're a series of dark fiend monsters who have zero defense, except for one example, and their game plan is quite bold. In a world where synchro monsters hold sway and Xyz are about to make their debut, Steel Swarms focus on the game's oldest summoning mechanic, the Tribute Summon. Which isn't wholly off its rocker, Monarchs have had a lot of tournament success on and off over the years, making use of a lot of off-theme support that provided them with free and easy tribute fodder. But this wouldn't be a hidden arsenal archetype if they didn't try to make things difficult, because our bosses only work when using on theme monsters as tribute fodder. So we're basically back to square one. Is the Steel Swarm support enough for it to be on par with other options? I don't know. When was the last time you heard someone recall fond memories of a Steel Swarm sweep? Yeah, thought not. Steel Swarm Cell is a level 1 monster with 0 attack, and if you control no monsters, you can special summon this monster from your hand. And while this card is face up on the field, it can't be tributed, except for the tribute summon of a Steel Swarm monster. Also, it can't be used as synchro material. Yeah, quite a few monsters had that restriction on them, uh, couldn't have people walking around with a level 1 non-tuner they could summon for free. That would ruin the entire format! But as a fodder monster, I can think of worse enablers. Though, I think the team might have misunderstood the assignment. Uh, this looks like it was made out of a bunch of different cells, not just one. Steel Swarm Scout is a level 1 monster with 200 attack, and at the start of main phase 1, if you control no spell or trap cards, you can special summon this card from your grave. But you can't special summon other monsters this turn you activate this effect. And like with Cell, wall face up on the field, you can't use it as synchro material, nor attribute it for anything except a Steel Swarm tribute summon. Scout is our tree born frog, but way, way worse. 
It doesn't have the same kind of standby phase trickery you can leverage when combined with cards like Enemy Controller, and puts you under a special summon lock to boot. And that's really rough. Uh, even the Monarch stuff only locks you out of special summoning from the extra deck. This is a big reason for why this deck is a massive disappointment, especially in light of their story. These are supposed to be the most powerful, ruthless invaders the planet has ever seen, combining the worms of voracious hunger with the fabled's cunning. But in reality, they're being supported by a little buggy with dreams of becoming an aviator, which is great for it, but if it would just focus on its job, we might get some better results. Steel Swarm Genome is a level 2 monster with a 1000 attack, and can be treated as 2 tributes for the tribute summon of a Steel Swarm monster. This will be integral for summoning out our bigger tribute monsters, getting them out quickly at minimum cost. Though the downside is that it lacks a way to free special summon itself so you can use your normal summon on that tribute, but I'm sure we can figure something out. It'll just be a matter of good deck building and genome sequencing. Steel Swarm Sentinel is a level 3 monster with 1100 attack, and while this card is in phase of attack position, special summoned level 5 or higher monsters on the field can't activate their effects. This is the first Steel Swarm we've run into that doesn't have anything to do with tribute summoning, and has some of that anti-high level flavoring we'd see in the theme's next iteration, and its own. Sadly though, we don't really have any ways to protect this, be it battle destruction immunity or redirecting attacks away from it. Not to mention Xyz and Link decks just don't care about this much at all. But if you think that's bad, you haven't seen anything yet. Check out Advanced Zone and Swing On By in about 6 minutes 29 seconds, cause this little guy is about to go through some stuff. Steel Swarm Caller is a level 4 monster with 1700 attack, and when a Steel Swarm monster is tribute summoned face up by tributing this card, you can special summon a level 4 or lower Steel Swarm monster from your deck. This can deploy Sentinel to get that Floodgate effect going if you're up against an appropriate field, or a couple other monsters we'll talk about in a moment. Funnily enough though, this works least well with our fodder cards. We don't want to summon Cell because the whole point of it is being a free special summon from hand, and Scout is, well we've already discussed the issues with Scout. Heck, if you summon that little weevil, we can't even use this effect! I think that name is putting in some work because this Steel Swarm is calling some bull. Steel Swarm Gatekeeper is a level 4 monster with 1500 attack and get this, 1900 defense, I guess we can see where that all went, and if a Steel Swarm monster is tribute summoned face up while this card is face up on the field, you can normal summon or set a monster in addition to your normal summon or set this turn. This isn't templated like all of our other non-activated or effect extra normal summons, which means these actually stack with each other, giving you the potential for infinite tribute summons, sacrificing one for another over and over again to keep getting on tribute summon effects. It's another example of a borderline broken effect attached to an archetype that'll never be able to take full advantage of it. Oh, hey Repair Genesis Controller, uh, what are you doing here? Steel Swarm Sting is a level 4 monster with 1850 attack, ooh that's an ominous attack stat, and when this card you control is sent to the graveyard, target a face up ritual, fusion, or synchro monster on the field and destroy that target. Thankfully, even though it's a win effect, it is mandatory, so if you tribute over this, you do get the removal of the above super types. It's missing Xyz even though they were introduced by the time this was released, but if I had to chalk it up to anything, it's that ritual, fusion, and synchro represent the individual Gishki. Gem Knight and, gosh, Laval, Gusto, and Vylons all at once, while the Xyz of the format represent these themes overlapping with each other, becoming too strong for the Steel Swarm to deal with. It's a cool effect that mixes flavor and function, something we wouldn't see done so successfully for a long time to come. I don't mean to be a grump about this, but if they were capable of this kind of storytelling that far back, why didn't they bust it out more often? Honestly, as a big lore enjoyer, it kinda stings. Steel Swarm Mantis is a level 5 monster with 2200 attack, and when this card is tribute summoned by attributing a Steel Swarm monster, you can pay a thousand life points to target a Steel Swarm monster in your graveyard and special summon that target, giving you even more fodder for even more tribute summons. So if you have more ways to get more tribute summons, like, say, Gatekeeper, Mantis is a great enabler to give you a second body to harness our higher leveled Steel Swarms. Alternatively, since it can summon any Steel Swarm, you can just summon a higher level one from your grave purely for their damage output. They may end up being big vanillas because of that, but if you just need damage, that's always an option. And when it comes to Caesar over here, it could use all the help it can get. That's why we always make sure its ability is Technician. Steel Swarm Moth is a level 6 monster with 2400 attack, and when this card is tributed by attributing a Steel Swarm monster, you can pay a thousand life points to target up to two cards your opponent controls and return those targets to the hand. Which isn't 
that bad, actually. Mobius and Kuraz are the only monarchs that can match it in the sheer amount of cards you can remove, and if you hit an extra deck monster, it's even better than standard removal. This is probably our biggest power card, so don't you mess with this moth, man. Steel Swarm Giristag is a level 7 monster with 2600 attack that you can tribute summon in face of attack position by tributing a single Steel Swarm monster. And when this card is tribute summoned by tributing any number of Steel Swarm monsters, you can target a card your opponent controls and send it to the grave and gain a thousand life points. Hey, that's actually also nice. Gets around destruction protection and triggers, and even refunds you some life points that you'll be paying for your other effects. And despite the level, it is just as easy to summon as our previous options. Besides, it's got the Mega Buster up. Who isn't gonna love playing as Mega Man, right? Uh, drops January 7th, by the way. Steel Swarm Caucastag is a level 8 monster with 2800 attack, and when tribute summoned by tributing two Steel Swarm monsters, activate one of these effects. Either destroy every other monster on the field, or destroy all spell and trap cards on the field. Which means we're either resolving a very kind Dark Hole, or a not so kind Heavy Storm. This is the first monster so far to take full advantage of Genome's double tribute effect, and you can potentially get a lot of value out of Caucastag cementing us as a bit of a going second strategy. Break boards with this, then swing in for big chunks of damage. Just make sure you don't overcommit your own cards to the board too. You wouldn't want to resolve this and lose all those cards. Uh, that would really cock a stag things up. Steel Swarm Longhorn is a level 9 monster with 3000 attack, and once per turn, if this card was tribute summoned by using any number of Steel Swarm monsters, you can pay a thousand life points to target a monster on the field and destroy it. Now, despite the added tribute cost, this sounds less powerful than Giristag, and that effect gains you life points. But where our previous monsters function like monarchs, only getting their effects on tribute summon, Longhorn can be activated every turn, as long as you met the tribute summon requirements, giving you a repeatable way to deal with your opponent's monsters. And it's just as easy to summon with Genome as Caucastag, meaning we've got a card that's a bit better at surgically picking apart your opponent's board, going a long way towards cinching a win. Steel Swarm Hercules is a level 10 monster with 3200 attack that can't be special summoned, and requires 3 Steel Swarm tributes to normal summon, and cannot be normal set. Once per turn, you can pay half your life points to destroy all other cards on the field. Like Longhorn, this is repeatable, and takes from Caucastag's effect, rolling both of them together for a total board wipe. Genome is still an important option here, helping to cut down on the tribute cost, which is going to be more important than ever because we've got to be mindful of the life point cost. Half of those is pretty steep and puts you in some serious trouble if you can't close out the game soon enough. As the deck's biggest, baddest boss, this effect is a fitting payoff. I mean, if you're gonna ask for god card levels of tributes, you better be able to deliver. And I would say that Obelisk's board wipe effect but a little to the left counts for that. Next up, we have a couple of extra deck monsters because, you know, that's what we want to be playing in a theme that includes a monster that locks us out of special summoning. Thankfully, our first representative saw a lot of play in a lot of other decks. Steel Swarm Roach is a rank 4 Xyz monster with 1900 attack, requiring any two level 4 monsters as material. And during either player's turn, when a level 5 or higher monster would be special summoned, you can detach an Xyz material from this card to negate that special summon, and if you do, destroy it. This was about as anti-synchro as it got, since any of them that were relevant were definitely level 5 or higher. Roach was a staple in most extra decks, giving you a great counterplay for those strategies when going first, and with a decent attack stat, it wasn't going to get run over so easily by your run-of-the-mill normal summon. It's also the only heroic Steel Swarm monster, because as Advanced Zone shows us, this is a version of Sentinel that has been influenced or purified by the Vylon, and would go on to have a part in a lot of the story moving forward, which, once again, is a a thematically appropriate situation. Roaches are, after all, notoriously difficult to stamp out, even though it's doing a little exterminating of its own. Steel Swarm Origin is a link to Light Fiend monster, very curious, with 2000 attack requiring any two Ill Swarm monsters as material. While this card is in your extra monster zone, if a monster would be special summoned from the extra deck to a main monster zone, it must be special summoned to the zone this card points to, effectively recreating the first iteration of Master Rule 4, just slightly to the left. While this card points to a monster, neither player can target it with card effects, nor can it be destroyed by battle or card effects. Once per 
per turn, when any number of monsters on the field are destroyed by battle or by card effect, you can special summon level 4 or lower ill swarm monsters from your deck in defense position up to the number destroyed. While the evil swarms are more adept at gathering the material needed to summon this, steel swarm can make the best use out of it. Tribute summon Cockastag or Hercules to the zone this card points to, then use their effects wiping out every other monster on the field, excluding Origin since it's protected. Then, the more monsters you blow up with it, the more monsters you get to summon out of it. And while they are summoned in defense position, that just means you get a lot of fodder to work with. And if you summon Gatekeeper, the amount of tribute summons you can do from this point is off the charts. But the most interesting thing about this is the lore implications. As the only light steel swarm monster, this puts it in line with the Fable. And that's not just me lining up type and attributes, the mouth does look similar to many of the Fable we've seen before. But I'm not sure it lines up with any specific one up, maybe Leviathan, but I think the anonymity might be on purpose to show that it's just a generic member of the Fable. I'm positing that this is meant to show that the Steel Swarm are, in fact, an offshoot of the Fable that were infected by the Evil Swarm virus long ago, developed into the state over many, many, many millennia after being sealed away by the Vylon. We'll see that the Evil Swarms will grow insect-like features on their host, so given time, I wouldn't be surprised if their victims took on that form fully. The fact that the Steel Swarms all have similar body types is probably because they only had Fable to work with. Well, not all of them have similar body types, the smaller ones are pretty different, but remember, the Fabled also had little servants that also clashed with their whole vibe. And while this is a bit more subjective, the Steel Swarm Insignia does look like the Evil Swarm one wearing a mask. Like the Fabled Insignia, maybe? Just saying. Now, that doesn't do anything to explain the Evil Swarm origin, but that's not what we're talking about here today, buddy. Look at the card! Keep up. Now we've got some spells and traps to talk about. While infestation cards can be found across both themes, we'll be focusing on the ones that specifically work with Steel Swarm for now. First, we have First Step Towards Infestation, a quick play spell card that returns a face-up tribute summoned Steel Swarm monster you control to the hand to draw a card. So after spending cards on a tribute summon, this card is just asking you to put it back in your hand to effectively replace the spell card we spent on it. This couldn't have been an archetypal draw two spell. And yeah, it's a bit disappointing, but the idea isn't so much to play this for the draw, but to reset our Steel Swarm so they can activate their on tribute effects again. And because of its quick play card status, it can also be used to dodge targeted interaction. So think of it as less of a card to give you a draw engine and more of a way to keep you from bleeding your resources dry. It's less of a payoff and more of an investment. Infestation Ripples is a normal trap card that has you paying 500 life points to target a level 4 or lower Steel Swarm monster in your grave and special summon it. A great option for getting you back genomes so you can tribute summon your bigger Steel Swarms, or surprising your opponent with Sentinel's effect. Not to mention is a great alternative to Scout. No, I will not shut up about how much I dislike that card. 500 life points is pretty cheap when it comes to getting tribute fodder, though now its only bonus is that it's searchable. With Back to the Front, you can summon a lot more targets, and for free, though the fact that it looks like it's being birthed from a vat of sludge that looks a lot like the stuff Worms left behind is not a pleasant thought. I'm just going to ignore the lore implications of that one. Infestation Tool is a normal trap card that sends a Steel Swarm monster from your deck to the grave to target a face-up Steel Swarm monster you control, and it gains 800 attack until the end phase. This fills up your grave, which can set up Scout, but now that we have Ripples, this can actually set up almost anything. 800 is also a pretty substantial bonus, so you can flip this during the damage step to get over anything that your opponent might have thought would bowl you over, but it is only temporary, and the fact that the only option that won't ruin your special summoning requires other options to function properly isn't a strong mark in its favor. When it comes to tools, they're supposed to work for us, not the other way around. Infestation Wave is a normal trap card that returns a face-up tribute summon Steel Swarm monster you control to the hand to target a card your opponent controls and destroy it. This is basically first steps, but for actual removal, so it's good we have options. It's not as fast as first steps, so it's less useful in keeping our monsters safe from Valor and the like, but I'm certainly not going to say no. In fact, it may be ahead of its time. With Transaction Rollback, normal trap cards are back to making waves. Alright, that covers all the Steel Swarm, now it's time for their next insidious form, the Evil Swarm. What's the deal with them? 
Well, they're a series of dark attribute monsters with various types and come in either one of two flavors. Level 4 spamming, 4xc summoning, and anti-meta. We've got effects that blow up special summoned monsters, effects that prevent the summon of high level monsters, dodging interaction, all sorts of stuff that gets on the opponent's nerves while they gather up their resources. And like Shadal's, you'll be seeing a lot of familiar faces, as the evil swarm has taken over the bodies of monsters from across Dual Terminal's history up to this point. Oh, and all their stats end in 50s, which would end up becoming a shorthand for corruption across multiple cards through many different lores, a sea of morph ages for something similar. First up, we've got a normal monster, Evil Swarm Heliotrope, a level 4 rock monster with 1950 attack and 650 defense, with some of the most interesting card text I've ever seen. It's uh, been a while since I've spoken Evil Swarm, so uh... <coughs> Why do I feel like watching some Doctor Who now? Anyway, yeah, this is a corrupted gem knight that we've actually never seen, which kind of threw me for a loop, but I did learn that heliotropes are also called bloodstones, so that's pretty spooky. Hopefully we get the base version of this card someday. It makes for a strong normal summon to back up your team, gives you an unexpected die target, and was a popular summon off of Rescue Rabbit to give us access to rank 4's Lickety Split. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have the inexplicable urge to go post some toxic thoughts on the fashion statement of Fez's. Evil Swarm Azathoth is a level 4 reptile flip monster with 750 attack and 1950 defense, and its flip effect targets a special summoned monster on the field and shuffles it into the deck. This isn't a corruption of one monster, but many of the worms left over from the near beginning of the story, and while their individual flip effects were lacking, now it's the ultimate man-eater bug, defending against just about any normal summoned monster and wiping out any special summoned one that tries to mess with it. See? Teamwork really does make the dream work. It's just that sometimes the team requires you to merge your physical forms into a chimeric blob where you can't tell where one part ends and the other begins. Just some good old-fashioned Yu-Gi-Oh! body horror. Evil Swarm Caster is a level 4 warrior monster with 1750 attack and 550 defense, and during the turn this card was normal summoned, you can normal summon an Ill Swarm monster in addition to your normal summoner set. This is the corrupted version of the brother of a monster we've actually talked about before, Constellar Pollux, which is reinforced by their shared effect. The cool thing is that the extra normal summon works on both Evil and Steel Swarm, which is something you'll notice as we progress through the archetype. Not only does this retroactively give us another way to gain tribute summons in Steel swarms, though be careful, while Caster is an ill swarm, it's not a steel swarm, meaning you won't trigger a number of their effects, this will primarily get you the normal summon needed for another evil swarm to hit board to make a rank 4, which basically makes this our most versatile Xyz enabler. You know, it probably wasn't this monster's choice, but I think the evil swarm really castered the right guy for the job. Evil Swarm Hresvelg is a level 4 winged beast flip monster, again with this stuff, with 1150 attack and 1850 defense, and when flipped, you can target a face-up card your opponent controls and return it to the hand. This is the corrupted version of Digusto Falcos and is kind of like Azathoth, but will whiff less and has more targets. While you can't hit face down targets, it's usually better to bounce the stuff that you can see, though be careful of hitting targets that get more value when summoned or activated, cause that's just begging for trouble. Best to deal with something its own size of, you know, featherweights. Evil Swarm Karikion is a level 4 spellcaster monster with 1600 attack and 1550 defense, a stat line that shows off that they aren't fully corrupted, and while this card is in the grave, if it was sent there this turn, you can normal summon an Ill Swarm monster for one less tribute. You can banish an Ill Swarm monster from your grave, then target an Ill Swarm monster in your grave and add that target to your hand. Also, this card gains the following effect. This turn, you can activate this effect. Normal summon an Ill Swarm monster. Okay, a lot going on here. First off, this is the corrupted, quote-unquote, version of Constellar Rosselhag. Having evolved by fusing with the three corrupted Ice Barrier Dragons, we'll get to those later, which in turn causes them to absorb Sophia's power of destruction. Second, this is basically the same card as Constellar Sombre, doing the same thing but for Constellars, which makes sense as Sombre uses fusion to steal away Sophia's power of creation. Three, 
This is an absurdly cool card for the theme. Holy cow. The tribute discount is useful for a couple of the monsters we'll talk about in a bit, but has notable implications for Steel Swarm. Granted, it's a non-bow in most cases, as they have to be tribute summoned to trigger their effects, and Caucasdag needs specifically two to work with, but Longhorn only cares about having used a single Steel Swarm, so do it that way, you will. As for the Xyz spamming route, we can take a grave full of on-theme monsters, banish one to get back another, and then normal summon it, letting us take advantage of effects like Caster to get even more normal summons, and because Karikion's normal summon is an activated one, not one that adds to your player actions like Caster does, they do stack. This is basically another 1 card rank 4 from the mid to late game, and is a must run for any version of the deck. Trust me, it'll be a valued member of your staff. Evil Swarm Ketos is a level 4 aqua monster with 1750 attack and 1050 defense, and you can tribute this card to target a spell or trap card your opponent controls and destroy that target. This is a corrupted version of Gishki Shadow, and effectively lets you convert your extra summons into removal. In fact, it's not so different from Evil Swarm O-Lantern, a level 4 pyro monster with 1650 attack and 1250 defense, and you can tribute this card to target a face-up monster your opponent controls and destroy it. This is the corrupted version of Laval Cannon, and these two give you a way to deal with just about any card in the game vulnerable to targeting and destruction. But Exiled 4 style effects haven't really been relevant since... Uh, gosh, I think Archfiend is centric, and that's a repeatable Pendulum Monster. These are just two goons in a deck looking to use its material to make big rank 4 threats. So that playstyle and monsters that tribute themselves for effects mix about as well as... Depth, Fire, and Water. Evil Swarm Mandragora is a level 4 plant monster with 1550 attack and 1450 defense, and if your opponent controls more monsters than you do, you can special summon this card from your hand. Hey, another free special summon on a level 4 monster in an Xyz strategy. It must be a day ending in Y. I'm told this is supposed to be a corrupted version of Naturia Cosmo Beat, and the effect at least lines up, but I'm not wholly convinced on that. What I like here is that, unlike most monsters that special summon themselves from hand for free, you can actually have an established board and still special summon it. You just have to make sure that you have less monsters than your opponent. And with the way modern Yu-Gi-Oh plays nowadays, that shouldn't be too hard. Zing! <laughs> uh, now I've just got to complain about how Link summoning ruined the game and I can get all the Yu-Gi boomers to watch. Evil Swarm Obliviwisp is a level 4 pyro monster with 450 attack and 2050 defense, and if this card battles after damage calculation, negate the effects of that monster, including in the grave. This is the corrupted version of Neo Flamvel Origin, which is double sad considering it only just got started with a new life before it all got snuffed out. Notably, that negation does not wear off, so if your opponent runs headfirst into this and they can't get over the defensive wall, you get to keep the wisp, and they walk away with a vanilla for their troubles. I mean, that's about the only time I think that effect is going to trigger. Theoretically, it can happen if it runs over a monster, if we had bigger attack boosts, which would be useful against graveyard-centric themes, but as it stands, it's a giant soldier of stone with upside. But at this point, I can't really blame it. It's probably using all of its energy just to maintain the infection. Between this being a non-corporeal creature that shouldn't have a system to infect in the first place, and, you know, being a literal ball of burning fire, the evil swarm are putting in overtime here. Evil Swarm Salamandra is a level 4 dinosaur monster with 1850 attack and 950 defense, and up to twice per turn, you can banish a monster from your grave to give this card a 300 attack boost until the end of your opponent's turn. This is the corrupted version of Jurak Titano. That meteor may have wiped out the dinos, but I guess it left behind some pretty corpses. And, uh... <laughs> Wow, that is some powerful Bazoo the Soul Eater flavored nostalgia right there. While it's not the same effect, it's very close, letting Salamandra temporarily turn into a gigantic monster to apply some pressure before the next turn, at which point you can either cash in more monsters, keep it around as a decently sized 1850, or use it as a summon material. It's a decent card, but its most notable feature is probably its impact on the Flame Swordsman archetype, because it's probably the reason you can only search out Salamandra spells and traps. Wouldn't want to include this magnificent specimen, dinos are Rex Raptors territory. Evil Swarm Thunderbird is a level 4 thunder monster with 1650 attack and 1050 defense, and during either player's turn, when a card or effect is activated, except during the damage step, you can banish this card you control, and during the next standby phase, return this card banished by this effect to the field, and if you do, it gains 300 attack. 
This is the corrupted version of Mist Valley Thunderbird and is the trickiest member of the theme by far, escaping from the field if it sees anything that might endanger it beyond a summon. And if your opponent tries to normal summon something to run over this before it can jump away, remember that this can trigger with both players' activations, so keeping a chainable trap card in rotation ain't a bad idea. This was actually one of the headliners alongside Wind Up Rabbit in a deck called Chain Beat. Named as such because it always wanted to be on the beat down while playing a lot of chainable traps to always have a response that kept you on top of the game. And being able to keep around what was effectively a 1950 attack monster while under the effects of Black Garden was a combo that was pretty tough to get out from under. Evil or no, Thunderbird just cannot avoid being used for busted synergies. Evil Swarm Zayhack is a level 4 dragon monster with 1850 attack and 850 defense, and if this face-up card you control is destroyed by your opponent's card and sent to the grave, target a special summoned level 5 or higher monster on the field and destroy it. This is a corrupted version of a Dragoonity monster, but since we don't have any three-headed ones and they all have a pretty similar mouth, which is really their only discernible feature, I think it's a combination of three different small Dragoonities. Here's a bit of that anti-high-level monster theming, giving you an out to most fusions and synchros, as well as many main deck monsters that Zayhack can't deal with in battle. But if we're being real, I'd actually rather just use O-Lantern if I can help it. At least I'll be able to immediately use the effect to be as proactive as possible. Otherwise, my only option for using this proactively is crashing it into a bigger monster. Cool. You know, that's not exactly what I'd call a life say hack. Evil Swarm Golem is a level 5 rock monster with 2150 attack and 1250 defense, and once per turn, lets you target a level 5 or higher non-dark monster on the field and destroys that target. This is a corrupted version of... Uh, well, it certainly looks like a Cataster, but that's a machine, and Golem's a rock. And so far, the types have been pretty true to the base monster, so I feel like this is meant to convey that it's the warm components taken from the W Nebula meteorite that are being possessed, but I'd love to hear what you think about what it might be referencing down below. As for an effect, it's basically a Cataster that doesn't need to go to the battle phase, but does only activate once per turn and only during your main phases. So it's nowhere near the same threat on the battlefield as the original. Though, this one can get in for a a lot more damage since it isn't automatically killing every non-dark it comes into contact with. It's also pretty easy to get on the board despite the level, because we have both Caster and Kreekion giving us an extra normal summon and a body to tribute for it. Or if Kreekion is in the grave, just normal summon it for free and get yourself some free removal. And there's another silver lining. Since Golem is a rock, that could also imply they can't take over machine monsters, so while the ally of justice may be susceptible to corruption, at least a lot of our good good Gen Xs are safe. Anyway, here's Evil Swarm Capellia, a level 6 machine monster with 2450 attack and 2050 defense. It can't be special summoned, and when this card leaves the field because of an opponent's card, you can target a face-up monster your opponent controls and take control of it until the next end phase. This is a corrupted version of Locomotion R Gen X, being piloted by a corrupted Gen X controller, just to, you know, rub salt in the wounds. This time around, the steel isn't permanent, but unlike Locomotion, you actually get to choose among your opponent's face-up monsters on what you want to take. And, because Capellia is a level 6 monster, it's just as easy to get onto the field as Golem. And if you can find a way to use the stolen monster before you have to give it back, it'll be an investment well made. I desperately want this to see play, but you and I both know that I'm just taking a big ol' whiff of Copellium. Alright, that's all of our main deck monsters, time to shift over to our Xyz. And first up, we have Evil Swarm Bahamut, a rank 4 dragon monster with 2350 attack and 1350 defense, requiring two level 4 Ill Swarm monsters as material. Once per turn, you can attach an Xyz material from this card to target a face-up monster your opponent controls. Discard an Ill Swarm monster, and if you do, take control of your opponent's monster. This is the corrupted form of Brianak, Dragon of the Ice Barrier, and look! They actually made it a dragon this time! They must have seen my short. They also carried over the discard effect, except instead of bouncing a card, you get to take control of a monster permanently. The only downside is, because every part of this card from the effect to the summoning conditions is tied to our archetype, it doesn't splash as well as some of our other monsters. Or, heck, even the base version. But that's a pretty minor nitpick in the face of all the upside, and it's only gonna get better from here. Even if this just boils down to a whole, this is what you'd look like if you were an evil swarm meme. 
Evil Swarm Exciton Knight is a rank 4 Light Fiend monster, and we'll get to that soon enough, with 1900 attack and 0 defense, requiring any two level 4 monsters as material. Once per chain, during either your main phase or your opponent's battle phase, if your opponent has more total cards in their hand and field than you do, as a quick effect, you can detach a material from this card to destroy all other cards on the field. Also, your opponent takes no further damage this turn. This is our good friend Steel Swarm Roach, having been gifted power by Constellar Sombrain at the beginning of Age 3.0, anticipating Sophia's return. It's strange though, even though Exciton has the red dots on its body that are indicative of the Steel Swarm infection, it still has the Steel Swarm logo, though that probably infers that, despite the eruption of the Evil Swarm virus, roaches still maintain their autonomy. Mechanically, it's hard to really describe just how impactful this card was when it released. It was basically the Zeus of that era, though instead of being able to fire it off freely at any time and with no additional consequences, not to mention it sent instead of destroyed, Exciton could only use its effect to balance out the playing field, but that was already enough for most situations. You could either play it going second into an established board to punish overextension, or use it going first if you went minus on resources, hoping to dissuade your opponent from committing anything and mounting an offensive, since you basically had a kill button on standby. It's very much been power crept, so don't expect to see this in extra decks anytime soon, but at the time, cracking this from your pack was an exciting event. Evil Swarm Nightmare is a rank 4 fiend monster with 950 attack and 1950 defense, requiring two level 4 dark monsters as material. When your opponent special summons any number of monsters except during the damage step, you can detach a material from this card to change those special summoned monsters to face down defense position. This is the corrupted form of Double X Saber Bogart Knight, which is now rallying against the special summons it was so happy to facilitate in life. This has actually been a fantastic tech pick for any dark deck that can fit it into the extra. Even up till today, because this doesn't say once per turn on it and also punishes mass summons. If your opponent Pendulum summons or uses TG over Dragnar's effect, well, just flip all those new monsters face down and they can't use them. If they special summon a single big threat to try and run over Nightmare, well, if it's not a link or has any other kind of relevant interaction, then they just got Book of Moon. Whenever this shows up in a format, I actually can't help but crack a smile, because a dingus that sits there and tells your opponent no, not by negating the summon and destroying them, but by telling them to sit in a corner for a bit and cool off, is probably one of the funniest things in the game. Evil Swarm Ophion is a rank 4 dragon monster with 2550 attack and 1650 defense, requiring any two level 4 ill swarm monsters as material. While this card has Xyz material, level 5 or higher monsters can't be special summoned, and once per turn you can detach an Xyz material from this card to add an infestation spell or trap card from your deck to your hand. Ophion is the corrupted form of Ice Barrier Dragon Gungnir, and is single-handedly the card responsible for popularizing Evil Swarm as the anti-meta pick against dragon rulers when they ruled the roost. It basically shut off every Dragon Ruler summon, and as we'll see later, the ability to search the infestation spells and traps means you had access to a powerful on-theme Forbidden Lance, which meant only monster effects were getting past this. It was kind of a menace, forcing the opponent to be on a strategy that also exceeds summons low rank monsters, hopefully packing an answer to this most pernicious of perils. But sadly, history has borne out that this wasn't exactly the superpower counterpick to Dragon Rulers at the time, but I still wouldn't count this card out. Limiting the summon of higher leveled monsters that otherwise rely on effects to get them onto the field in a quick and efficient manner is a great way to dismantle a number of decks, and if any infestation cards get released in the future, they get stronger just because you can search them off of a rank 4. So if we ever get a, oh, I don't know, Terminal World update to this, keep an eye out, because Ophion is definitely going to be at the top of the pack. Just a, don't tell the Evil Swarm players that Blaster is still out, said I don't know if they can handle it. Evil Swarm Ouroboros is a rank 4 dragon monster with 2750 attack and 1950 defense, requiring any three level 4 monsters as material. Once per turn, you can detach a material from this card to activate one of the following effects. You can only use each effect of this card once while it's phase up on the field. You either target a card your opponent controls and return it to the hand, send a random card from their hand to the grave, or target a card in their grave and banish it. This is the corrupted version of Ice Barrier Dragon Trishula, and is... it's fine. For all the material it needs, it's only slightly larger than other available rank 4s, and while the variety of effects gives this card a lot of range and utility, the reason the original Trishula was such a problem card was that it hit all those zones at once, not to mention that all of them got banished. Aroboros does less over a longer period of time. 
I've had my fair share of success in more limited formats with this, um, this is another plug to watch progression polls by the way, hint hint, but as far as constructed Yu-Gi-Oh goes, you can do a lot better. And look, not one of these three heads is biting down on its tail, you have some nerve calling yourself an Ouroboros, for shame. Evil Swarm Thanatos is a rank 4 fiend monster with 2350 attack and 1350 defense, requiring any two level 4 dark monsters as material. Once per turn, as a quick effect, you can detach a material from this card, and this face-up card is unaffected by other monster effects this turn. This is the corrupted form of Fabled Ragin, riding atop a corrupted unicorn. It also looks like the little mini Fableds are here, but they are not converted, they're just wearing a bunch of kitchen utensils to blend in? We are definitely not beating the Maliciferous allegations. This is just a solid body to make if you're worried your opponent's gonna hit you with some monster effects, and it actually draws some stark parallels with Constellar Omega, which can detach a material as a quick effect to make all of your Constellars unaffected by spell and trap effects for a turn, and has a centaur body while Thanatos is riding a horse. Now, this could just be a reflection made because the Fabled and Constellars were mortal enemies, but in my history of Dual Terminal series, I posit that the Fabled are the themselves fallen constellars, so this makes for a cool parallel that I can use to keep hyping myself up on my own interpretation. See, being the community's self-appointed lore master means I can just decide stuff like that, it's one of the perks. Alright, that does it for the monsters, now it's time to move on to the spells and traps. Infestation Pandemic is a quick play spell card that makes all Illswarm monsters you currently control unaffected by other spell and trap effects for the rest of the turn. Oh hey, speaking of Constellar Omega, this is basically its effect, just for all your Illswarms. This is the primary search target off of Ophion, helping you to push through trap holes, mirror forces, dark holes, anything that isn't a monster is gonna have a hard time when up against this. Heck, you can even use this with your own detrimental effects like Torrential Tribute, cause this stops them from being affected by all spells and traps, not just your opponents, so feel free to get creative with this. The art itself is also really cool, showing a number of ruined monsters from a cross dual terminal story being invaded by the evil swarm contagion, but... If I'm being honest, this actually looks like one of those anti-vaping commercials, and I mean, if I thought my pen was going to turn me into a corrupted insect creature, I'd stop using it too. I mean, if I used them at all. Infestation Terminus is a normal trap card that targets an ill swarm monster you control and two cards your opponent controls. Banish the first target, and if you do, return the second targets to hand. So we have our own Icarus attack, but we banish our monster, which bites because we don't have a lot of banishing synergies, and instead of destroying the opponent's card, we bounce them back, which once again, is a mixed bag. It is searchable removal and will be a big help when putting freshly set back row back into your opponent's hand during their end phase, but with how valuable each card is for us, taking any of them out of the recycling cycle is a pain. And I'm not the only one who thinks so too, uh, y'all are fighting right above Sophia's bedroom and she is taking a nap. Don't think she's gonna be very happy if you wake her up. Infestation Infection is a continuous trap card, and once per turn, you can shuffle an Ill Swarm monster from your hand or face up from your side of the field into the main deck to add an Ill Swarm monster from your deck to your hand. This is actually really helpful in both halves of the deck, swapping out what cards you want to tribute summon, getting your hands on the right fodder, or getting the right piece in place for your Evil Swarm summon spam. The only issue now is the wait time. There's also the fact that it doesn't plus you, which means that even though you can activate this during your opponent's turn, you're not getting any additional value out of it, just extra hand fixing. It's also slightly annoying that it mentions the main deck that it has to return to, meaning you can't take extra deck monsters that have already used up their Xyz material and recycle them to get a new card to restart it, I felt that would have been really neat. But it's hard to be mad at it for long. Any deck that can sculpt its hand to get just the right plays has a kind of infectious enthusiasm. Alright, so that's all the Ill Swarm cards, but what do we do with them? Well, since we're talking about two distinct archetypes, we're gonna need to talk about two different approaches. Steel Swarm are gonna need a bunch of cards that don't necessarily summon out monsters in general, but Steel Swarm specifically to make use of their tribute summoned monsters, wiping out the board and rushing down the opponent with their gigantic stats. Meanwhile, Evil Swarms are in a strange position. They have a lot of cards that read like very powerful control tools, but outside of Karikion, they don't have an engine to continuously gain you 
advantage turn after turn to overwhelm your opponent. So we actually want to play less long-term control cards like Floodgates and lean more into short-term stun cards that keep our opponent on the back foot enough for us to make our big rank 4s and push for game. So what in the world can we play to help them out? On the tribute side of things, having cards that benefit from tribute summoning, or help with the mechanic in general, are going to support Steel Swarm a ton. And we actually have a couple non-archetypal, though very clearly dual terminal inspired, storyline cards that we should keep in mind to help with just that. While this first card is more in line with Gish Key since it checks if you've tributed monsters from your hand, Trial and Tribulation checks the monsters you've tributed from your hand and field to give you a cool bonus. You only get one of them, but between the choices of drawing a card, getting two monsters back from your grave into your hand, and destroying three cards, you're not exactly coming up blank. But if you want to get more value over time, I'd recommend checking out Advanced Zone from earlier. It's a continuous spell, will get you value any turn you tribute summon, and the effects are cumulative. This means if you tribute three monsters in a single turn, you get to pop a set card, draw a card, and return a monster from your grave to your hand. Card Advance is also a nifty way to stack your top deck while giving you an extra tribute summon to help extend your plays. If we want to protect Longhorn specifically, we can run Hardened Armed Dragon. It's easy to summon by pitching one of our big Steel Swarms, and if we tribute it alongside a Steel Swarm for Longhorn Summon, it'll be immune to effect destruction. But by far my favorite little tech pick for Steel Swarms is Illusory Snatcher, cause this lets you get the on summon effect of your Steel Swarms, and that Tribute Summon will trigger Illusory Snatcher's effect in hand, special summoning it, and copying that Steel Swarm's type, attribute, and level. Perfect for following up into a high-ranked Xyz monster to get even more value out of your monsters. For Evil Swarms, card selection is gonna be key. You wouldn't want to have Caster and not have an additional Normal Summon to go along with it, after all. Allure of Darkness can put in work for both themes, and while we don't have any particular banishing synergies to play off the card we banish with Allure, Different Dimension Reincarnation not only only gets those monsters back so we can use them to their fullest, the discard can potentially help fuel Karikion sooner than normal. Heck, even if you don't run Allure, DDR can still get you back the monster that you banish with Karikion, which could lead to bigger and better Xyz summons. Notably, none of our Evil Swarm cards lock us into any particular kinds of summons, so we can access a wide variety of the game's Xyz pool, and we have some great options to choose from. Get enough rank 4 material on board and you can convert your cards all the way up into Utopic Draco Future. If you battle with any of your Xyz, Zeus is still an option, very sorry Exciton Knight, but I think my favorite is the Armored Xyz line. If your opponent is on a theme that's not hindered by Ophion, you can instead get the search from it as normal, then overlay Xyz Armor Fortress on top of it. From there, you can attach the two material remaining on it to grab full armored Xyz and set it. Then, when it swings around to your opponent's turn, use that trap card to upgrade into full armored Dark Knight Lancer, and your opponent's gonna have to contend with a gigantic monster with protection that can scoop up a monster out of nowhere. I think my favorite thing about Steel Swarm Origin is that it can inexplicably give you a ton of material to make a gigantic Link Ladder climb. Even though Evil Swarms lack the kind of mass destruction that Steel Swarms have, we can still use off-theme options like Dark Hole and Raigeki. Heck, even Torrential Tribute is an option, especially if you combine it with what we've mentioned previously, Infestation Pandemic. As long as we have a monster being pointed to by Steel Swarm Origin, we can activate those cards with Abandon. Then, we summon a whole gaggle of monsters, and because Origin has no restriction on how it can be used as Link material, we can climb up into all kinds of things. SP Little Knight, Appaloosa, Saryuja, you name it, you can make it here. Just you know, make sure you're playing Triple Tactics Thrust to search out those tech cards. But probably the best support an Xyz deck could ask for comes in the form of Overlay Network, giving you the option to either get free material to help with your Xyz summoning every turn, or putting Xyz material back into your hand to recycle for later. Sadly, we can only use one effect per turn, even across multiple copies, but the two effects are helpful in complementary ways, so you'll almost always have a use for either of them. As for a silly tech pick, I think Balance of Judgment is pretty out there. It operates on a similar axis to Exciton Knight, but a little less in your favor. Exciton checks both players' hands and fields, while Balance checks your hand and field, but only your opponent's field. If you're able to get all of your cards out of your hand, the math is a little easier to swallow, but it will require your opponent to commit a lot more to the board to make this work. But once they do, you can fire off Exciton Knight during their battle phase, or your main phase, whenever you have it, then immediately chain with Balance balance, that way you get your draws before the board gets wiped and gets rid of that surplus. Is it practical? Hell no! Will it leave your opponent flabbergasted if you're able to resolve it? It most certainly will. Alright, that's all the Ill Swarm knowledge I have, but how does it stack up against the Nova Scale? Novelty. 
In all honesty, I don't think either of these decks are breaking new ground, even at the time. Despite Monarchs eventually getting there, I feel like Steel Swarm is the first tribute focused deck that was an actual honest to goodness archetype, but it doesn't use that fact to push the limits of the mechanic, so it doesn't really do anything all its own. Evil Swarm fares a bit better as before it came around, Xyz were more focused on rank 3s and enabling really big ones like 7s and 8s, but it also wasn't alone. Heroic Challengers were starting to get the ball rolling on that, and Brotherhood of the Fire Fist was hot on their heels. Being an Xyz deck that opposed leveled monsters was kind of a bop and helped to distinguish their level list monster type, but like with people, being against something isn't really a personality. You have to actually bring something to the table to be interesting, and evil swarms aren't serving much of it. So ill swarms get a 2 in novelty. Objectivity. Ophion was the closest thing this deck had to an unfun floodgate, but as time has gone on, we've gotten more and more ways to deal with it, as well as cards that just don't care about it. And since you can only summon it using Ill Swarm material, it's not likely to make an appearance even in a format that it could be effective in. The rest of the cards we have access to just allow for good, clean rank 4 toolbox access, and the Steel Swarm cards have been outclassed since day 1, so the theme gets a 5 in objectivity. Versatility. Just about everything in both themes rebels against the idea of synergy. Steel Swarms only benefit when using other Steel Swarms as tribute fodder. Heck, they can't even combo with their Evil Swarm legacy support monsters. And speaking of which, the Evils are so kitted up to do their own job and have a bunch of monsters only they can use, so they don't really venture out of the quarantine zone very often. So Ill Swarms are walking away with a 1 in versatility. Awesomeness. Admittedly, there is something cool about taking some of the most powerful synchro monsters of an era and reanimating them as Xyz corpses, and some of them aren't even that bad. Heck, the idea of having corrupted versions of monsters was a new concept at the time, at least for the stories, the only other instance was the quasi-canon dark versions of monsters like Greffer or Dad, and was a concept cool enough that we'd see it in many other stories over the course of Yu-Gi-Oh's history. But cool aesthetics don't mean a lot when it comes to actual gameplay. And I don't know about you, but when I play with cool cards, I also want to do well with them. Sadly, the decks are just not there, especially nowadays. So Ill Swarms get a 2 in awesomeness, which means they walk away with a total of 10 out of 20 on the Nova scale. And that's all I have to say about Ill Swarm. Wild that some of the biggest threats to Terminus ended up being such wet farts. And in Evil Swarm's defense, it was well positioned for its time. But as the years have gone on, it's been unkind to both sides of the coin, and if any theme is in need of an update from the Terminal World packs, it's this one. With good enough support, I could easily see the whole community catching the Ill Swarm... bug. But now, I want to hear what you all have to say. Are Ill Swarms a sick pick, or are you just sick of them? And which one's your favorite? I'm really in on Ophion, uh, that may be a vanilla pick, but the corrupted bug dragon design going on is giving big fair brand energy from Legend of Dragoon, and I can't say no to that. Let me know which ones are your favorite, and if you haven't already, please be sure to like the video if you liked it, subscribe so you don't miss an episode, and share this video with somebody you know who loves Yu-Gi-Oh! It really does a lot to help me out. Today's episode is brought to you by my lovely patrons, as well as the lovely people over at Dragon Shield. Get the sleeves as strong as dragon scales and save 5% on your order by using the coupon code GOLDENNOVA at checkout. Today's episode was also brought to you by my lovely patrons, including this month's illustrious Quasar Commanders Sir Knight JCB and the Critic of Innocence, Nebula Navigator's Third Dynasty, Ada Basilisk, Adam Zagdell, Anansi Dragon, Andrew Newman, Kane Senpai, Christopher Fuss, Clockswork, Emini Chan, Eric, Aaron the World Breaker, Frankie, Garland Chaos, Green Knight, Gloomba331, Great Big Pillock, Groog, Hair Bear, Harry the Ominous Benefactor, Howling Zangetsu, Iron Zero, Iskander711, Carp, Mana Charge, Marion Jamesy Picotta, Mega Combi, Millennia Asta, Muzuki Clark, Nathan Vig, Natiel Lee Alexander, Orozco 09096, Panther J, Rebel King Lucifer, Red Eyes Jackalow, RJ the Jank Monarch, Sammy Haim, Serenity Towns, Sky Buster Leo, That One Dumbass and the Wizard Moose, Cosmic Crusaders Alpha Sly, Almento 5010, A Random Pup, Ariel Kersey, Baron Von Titty Sprinkles, Beluga Master, Blitzwolf, Blue Gem, Borger with a Shotgun, Callum McCann, 
Chaz Ghost, Childish Lamar, Dr. Reaper, R.I.P., Drakenwald, Eki Bullock, Eva Padilla, Hike Boyajian, Herbal D, Ignis Heat the True Draco Slayer, In Blink, Jester Designs, Kale the Dragon, Kivon Public, King Scarlet Yu Gi Oh!, Lemon Yu Gi Oh!, Manga Pages, Marluxia is a Girl, Matt Simmons, Mick Spoofy, Michael Shimabukuro, Nitromo, Obsidian, Ramen Resurrect Chan, Shizuki Nijimura, Sophie, apparently, Stephen Williamson, Taylor Seymour, Terror Top to 3, The Legendary Raven, and Zeldreka, as well as the lovely Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. If you'd like to help me in my journey to cover all of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s archetypes, get my videos early, be a part of these credits and other awesome perks, it would mean the world to me if you checked out the link to my Patreon in the description or considered joining as a YouTube member. And if you'd like to see another video about monsters corrupted by the forces of darkness, check out this video covering Shadals. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye